All right, big jobs report today. 220,000, let's see, 223 non-farm payrolls, 220 private payrolls, down revisions of 20,000 from prior months, so in round numbers, 200,000. But wages were quite soft. And that's a question as whether the Fed might cease and desist at some point uh, and not destroy the whole economy. I know they're going to destroy most of it, but they might leave a little bit left. Anyway, joining us now, John Carney, Breitbart economics and finance editor and co-author of the excellent Breitbart Business uh, Digest. John, welcome back. Um, here's an interesting one to me. For production workers, wages called average hourly earnings up only two-tenths of one percent. And in the last three months, that's down to 4.2 percent. Uh, and then on top of that, hours worked actually fell for all employees. Actually, it fell, I'm sorry, it fell six-tenths of a percent in production workers. Now, to me, that's a very soft picture of the month of December for the jobs report. But what's your take? I think that a lot of people read it exactly as you're reading it, particularly the wages. They said, oh, look, we're getting the immaculate disinflation. We're getting uh, mm -hmm. the soft landing is now possible. Stock market go, you know, Dow's up 700 points. Everybody's, you know, hooray, hooray. First of all, the Fed is going to look at that rally today and say, no, no doing. They, they, they hate, hate it. They hate <laughs> stocks going up. Yeah, and so, you know, we're going to hear from Raphael Bostic on Monday. He, mm -hmm. he has a speech planned. I wouldn't be surprised if he does his best to talk people down from this euphoria. The Fed w is not going to take their signal from wages. Mm. I think everybody has that confused. Yes, the Fed is worried that wages will feed inflation, but the Fed doesn't believe that you could have a 3.5% unemployment rate, a 1.8 ratio of vacancies to unemployed people, and keep inflation down. No matter what that happens month to month, the Fed is going to look at those numbers and say, no, we need to soften the labor market. So three point, the unemployment rate falling to 3.5 really means that the Fed is going to hike. I think they'll get away with 25 basis points. They might be able to say, look, wages aren't that bad. It all depends on what happens with the CPI number next week. We'll get that. If that comes in mild, and it might, we had pretty mild number in December from November. So if we get a mild one, then I think they'll say we can do 25, but I don't think it stops them from doing four more 25s. I oh, think they're going to that's keep very going. interesting. Right. Four more 25s. I think there's a whole, there's at least another point. I mean, Neil Kashkari, who is not a hawkish guy when it comes to inflation, he's, pre, he's very pro labor. He is saying that he thinks the rate, the terminal rate, has to be 5.4%. So that's a whole other. 125 basis Isn't points. Isn't Neil Kashkari's whole history at the Fed one mistake after another? <laughs> I mean, I know Neil. It's not personal. He's right. a nice fellow. But he's been totally wrong on everything. I don't want to belabor the point and obsess about Neil Kashkari. I am interested, though, the household jobs soared, okay, 717,000. They had been declining in the prior months. But, 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 and get your take on this, um, it's all part-time. Right. Part-time workers are soaring. And, for example, part-time workers increased 679,000. That's almost the entire household survey increase, which kept the unemployment rate low. Uh, not for economic reasons, because people uh, want to work part-time. And part-time, I think, means lower wages. But I'm not sure I understand this unless America doesn't want to work anymore. I do think that a big part of it is people doing gig work. They don't want to work full-time. They enjoy you know, maybe working part-time, working at home. A lot of these part-time gigs are probably, peop are probably people who are able to, you know, control their, they may have some extra income left over from suppressed savings. So they're able to get by without, even though we have high inflation, they're able to get by without having a full-time job. But I would also say I distrust the household survey a little bit. No. Uh, it's a very, it's it, unlike the establishment survey, which is huge and hundreds of thousands of responses, it's, a, it's tens of thousands. And I think one of the reasons we saw the, it not matching up with what we were seeing in the establishment survey is that it was just wrong. I think that mm. we're, we're now playing catch up. The reason why you had a huge surge is that they're actually catching up with a lot of the jobs they forgot to count in December, November, October. One more point, you know, you mentioned the CPI a few moments ago. There's a story brewing about a major CPI yes. scandal where the, I guess, recent months, there's been massive government bond trading just a few seconds before right. the CPI 
comes out of the Biden White House. We've never seen anything like this. You know, Kevin Hassan and I have been going back and forth because we were the gatekeepers right. for those numbers, and we actually played by the book. And well, we would, I, I would. Now what is, there's, what's happening with this scandal? I think Congress needs to ask the White House who gets these numbers. As you say, they come in to... I'll tell you who gets them in well, the White well, House. We don't know now. You, you oh, know you where they the come in. the new White House. Right, the right. new White House. They need to find out who... You know, we know that the CEA gets it, the yes. NEC gets it, yes. but we don't know who they share it with internally. Well, that's the thing, and we wouldn't. Right. You're, we wouldn't. People don't need to know in that fact, number. In fact, some... I won't mention any names of chiefs of staff, but we wouldn't. Period. And sentence. Now, the president has a right to know, sure. but most of the time, we wouldn't. And, that's mo the and truth. most presidents. And most of the time, he didn't want it. Don't, that's what I was going to say. Is because most of the time, like, they, oh. they don't want it. They don't want to slip up. They're, it doesn't really help them to know it at you know 8 a.m. rather than at 8:30 when the number comes out anyway. So, you know, what does it matter? This does seem like because it's not just that there's a lot of trading. There's a lot of trading in the right direction. So it seems like right. people actually do have a grip on what's coming out. We need to find out, you know, plug that leak. I don't think it's the Department of Labor. They've, you know, they've been no. running this safe and secure for a long time. I think it's somewhere where it's getting transmitted. It's a potential scandal. Yes, it is. A, it is a big scandal. The SEC should be. I'm, I'm sure they are. They're looking into this. When I was an M&A lawyer, we used to. As soon as we announced a deal, the SEC would send us a letter that had the names of everybody who did unusual trading, and, you, and basically they asked, "Do you know any of these people?" So I'm sure right now they're going through everybody who did unusual trades around, you know, in front of CPI and figuring out, you know, how, how could they have gotten this information? But in those days when you were practicing law, it was the Security Exchange Commission. Absolutely. Today it's the Securities and Environmental Commission. <laughs> exactly. But I don't think they even they're know anything busy. about this who stuff. Cares? They're much yeah. too busy, right? Secur you know, securities, who cares? You know, insider trading with White House information, who cares? We're going to follow know, the CPI get an environmental scandal bank. story. Yeah. Environmental Bank, don't start me because I'm already over time. John Carney of Breitbart, thank you very much.